Hey kids! Uh, today we are going to clean the carburetor on this. It's a Coleman Maxa 5000 watt ER Plus. The ER Plus Maxas have a fancier circuit board, but basically it's the same type setup as those green Coleman generators. And I got a whole slew of them in here. There's a issue going on with dirt in the carburetors, right? Dirty carburetors. So uh, ethanol gas is a lot of the problems, but this one here in particular had a dirty tank. If you've got a dirty tank, you're going to have a dirty carburetor, right? So let's get down to it. Let's teach you how to clean it. Um, first things first, tools that you're going to need. I like having some needle nose pliers. You can use any kind of pliers you want. You'll see why. Um, these are gas line crimpers. Uh, of course, if you can't find these anywhere, I'll send you links to all this stuff. This one has three settings, three clicks. One, two, three. The tighter, the, uh, the higher the number click, the tighter this will get okay um, I'm gonna set you up with magnetized tip screwdrivers right I highly recommend them they're the same cost why people don't own them I don't know um, let's use a 7 16 open end wrench 7 16 uh, this is an open end box end I know it ain't shaped like a box I know calm down I didn't name it I didn't name it all right um, you're gonna need a pick I'll send you a link to picks. Can you see that? It's like a dental pick. Um, yep. And uh, carburetor cleaners. You're going to need those. And also some carburetor choke cleaner. Yep. I'll send you a link to those if you can't find that stuff. Okay, let's get to it. First things first, we're going to take off the air cleaner. Let's get it out of the way. That has a wing nut on it. That wing nut should be just hand tight on there, but sometimes you might need to use a pair of pliers or something to get it off. Um, but the, this one's hand tight. Take the wing nut off. What I like to do is to take the cover off, put the wing nut in the cover so you don't lose it. Take the air cleaner off so you don't lose it. It's in the cover. Everything will go in, um, in order, okay? Set that in a safe spot so you don't knock it over. This housing, the assembly, you're going to need your Phillips head screwdriver to take it off. There are two screws right here. Two screws. You take them right out. Actually, I don't. I mean, I un undo them, but I leave them in. So when I take this thing apart, it comes apart pre-assembled. I'll show you what I mean. Everything stays in place if you do it right. Okay. See how I did that? So I leave it all intact. If you take a look here, the screws are still in there. And you just place it just like that. Then you don't have to think about how to put it together. It's so simple. Okay. Uh, my next magic trick is uh, we shut the gas off. We should shut the gas off. Let's shut that gas off, okay? Can you see? Let's zoom in. Okay, let's get some light up here, too. Should have proper lighting. So this gas line, can you see it? Yeah, there's a valve right here. When it's up and down, when it's vertical, it's open. When it's horizontal, it's closed. So looking at it, oh, it's all the way horizontal. No, listen for a click. Yeah, that's a trick. Click it or drip it. Click it. Okay, she's clicked into place. Uh, that stops the gas flow for most part. If there's dirt in that valve, she's still going to drip through. And if you don't have a valve, that's where these come in handy. Or if it's still dripping through, you have a gas line filter right in the middle. There's a nipple on both sides of it. I'm going to be on the gas tank side of it. But if you go close to that nipple, you will break that gas line or cut it. So stay a little bit away so some flexibility is there. Half inch to an inch is good enough. We clip it. Well, let's listen now. One, two, three. I did three clicks. Okay. All right. The other thing you're going to want is a gas can nearby. If you want to drain out that tank, drain it into a gas can. Uh, any fluids, I don't recommend use, reusing the gas, first of all. Let's, uh, you can filter it and strain it and do all that good stuff, but she's pretty well dirty in this episode. So let's take apart the gas line. The gas line from the tank will go in this, and then I have a 
glass jar, can you see it, to catch any remnants from the carburetor uh, to the filter, right? So let's just pull this apart, and I probably can shut this off. I think the battery's dying on it. Yep, I can shut it off. Okay, so here we go. Pull it apart. It's really usually tougher than this. But this is nice, flexible gas line, and uh, my garage is sort of warm today. Got a new heater. Pretty excited about it. Okay, so here we are. We're draining off all the gas out of that line. So our next step is in the sediment bowl, there's going to be some gas in there. We have to use our open-end wrench, set this after you get this done dripping. And once it's done dripping, let's watch this. Steve trick of the day. Stick it up in there someplace where she's not going to drip. Tuck it away. Okay, now let's set the gas, the gas catcher underneath this. This is why I use a little glass jar over here because my gas can is never going to fit. And any gas that's in this will drip out. So you get it so she's hand tight and let it drip, 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 drip. Okay, drip it out. Let's see. All right, we're dripping it out. Okay. All right, we're done dripping it because mine is empty. Okay. If you want to drop it and clean it, you can. But for the most part, we got, for all intents purposes, and there's no one intense around here, so I don't know why I say that. Okay, next thing. Our open-end wrench and our screwdriver. This, uh, these screws and bolts go into that intake. We have to unhook the carburetor from the intake. That's our next step. Sometimes you need the wrench, but for the most part, this flat surface on the carburetor really holds that bolt in place. Okay, so let's uh, let's just do it. Okay. I already took the liberty of getting the backside off. It's already off. So we're just doing the front because we're just trying to save a little bit of time on the video time. It's a pain in the butt to have to splice videos together. Oh, yeah. So you capture your bolt. I mean, your knot. This is the knot. Capture that knot. I already took the other one off. So now I'm ready to take this off. Let's take it off. You're going to have a governor assembly on here. That linkage has a like a complex S hook style on it. You have to slide this out. So let's take it off this the carburetor and now we gotta unhook this top uh, throttle assembly. It's, it's a governor. So it's usually a little more difficult than that. Um, so here, now we got the carburetor off. Now we gotta take this unit out, the sediment bowl we take this bolt out. When you take that bolt out, there will be a washer gasket on it. Let's take it out. Because we already loosened it. So there's my uh, bolt with the washer gasket. There are some ports in here. So you got to take that gasket right off it. And we're going to spray and clean this too. Yep, we're going to spray and clean that. Let's set him over here. In the safe spot, let's take off that sediment bowl. Usually you want your glass jar nearby because when you take this off, there's going to be a little puddle in there and you drain it into your, your glass jar. Okay, now the tricky part. Let's, uh, let's not lose any of these parts. This is your float mechanism. And we have to take the float. There's a pin right here you got to take out. And there's a stopper that this float is hooked to that stops your gas from flowing in and out. So here I use my tweezers and I pull in, uh, I pull out this pin. Let's pull that pin first thing. Actually, so we don't ruin this gasket as I look at it, this pin's pretty long. We're going to take the gasket out. Let's do the gasket first, people. All right. Sometimes you can get away with it. But this is what I use my pick for. And I'm going to get it started. Get her loose. And you save your gasket. 
That gasket is in perfect condition. We don't need to buy a new one, so we save it. Okay, now we take our ply. You can use pliers. I push that through, and I just get it started. And now we pull this pin. My fingers on it. I got the pin. Put that in the safe spot too. Okay, so now as I lift this up, see if we can get a good shot of the stopper. This guy is just on there by a, a, a hair. And he is really, it looks like a paper clip. It's a clip that holds this in. You cannot lose that. It's full functioning. Alright, so let's set that down over here with the float. Okay, now we are all ready to clean this. Let's get our cleaners out. Our carb cleaner, I like to use the little, this little guy, and I ream every port that I can find out, and I do big and small, and I clean every single one. I open up my choke, and I got some jets right here that I want to clean. Go as deep and as far as you can. There's two right here. Yep. So anyhow, let's open up our throttle assembly, make sure there's none in here, and then it's that quick, it's that simple. Let's grab a big brush, the big brush, let's go right down the stem, you can hear it shine, yeah. you can spin it. Make sure she's good. I just take it out, okay, this right here, and I have two more here. Okay, now I take my carbon choke cleaner, but since there could be hard stuff in there too, you can use your air compressor and just blow it out if you don't like the harsh chemicals of carbon choke cleaner because this stuff is pretty harsh make sure you have some kind of latex gloves these are nitro gloves that I like they agree with me the best I have a place a clean out um, catch just like a pail for this to go into this stuff should never and any of the gases or oils that come out of your machines should go back to a um, facility that will recycle or repurpose the oils and gases. If you don't know where those places are, you can go to your, call your local landfill area um, or go to any automotive um, automotive parts place. Will tell you where to go. Okay. Yep. Anyhow, let's clean it. We're gonna spray it. Listen to me, spray it. I can't show you. And always wear safety glasses. I have my work glasses on. They are safety-like glasses, but they aren't the real deal. And I'm a very safe person. I preach safety all the time. So let's do it the safest way possible. And you don't have to go crazy with it, but again, you don't have to be very conservative with it either. You hear it running, spray all the dirtiness out. So now, when you're done, she's still dripping. you got to let it dry for 10 minutes minimum. It even says that on the can. Let's just set it on this glass. All right, we're going to set up more videos for you. 14 minutes, we had this thing taken apart and cleaned. Carburetor's clean. Now all we've got to do is let it dry, let it uh, put it back together, and then put it back on the on the unit. Uh, I'm going to send you links to all those tools that I just used. Any comments? I love constructive criticism. Um.